Pulmonary arterial hypertension is the number one cause of death in patients with scleroderma and mixed connective tissue disease. However, when you look at the guidelines that are there, the recommendations that are there for screening of pulmonary arterial hypertension, they come from cardiologists and pulmonologists, and they all focus on echocardiogram or transthoracic echocardiogram for screening of pulmonary arterial hypertension. What we did was we sought the help of our cardiologist our rheumatologists, our pulmonologists, our internists who have expertise in screening and diagnosis of pulmonary arterial hypertension and brought them together using a data-driven and consensus-based methodology to develop these recommendations. And, and exactly what are the recommendations? Well, there are multiple recommendations. There are multiple level of recommendations. We used a criteria called RAND-UCLA methodology that is well-established by American College of Rheumatology and the EULAR, where we are right now. The recommendations go over who are the people who are appropriate for screening. For example, one of the recommendations says that if you have scleroderma or scleroderma spectrum of disorders, you should be screened annually for pulmonary arterial hypertension. Why? Because the data suggests that the risk of pulmonary arterial hypertension is rather high in these patients. The recommendations also state that if you don't have scleroderma, or scleroderma spectrum disorder, you don't need to screen them yearly because we are uncertain what the prevalence of pulmonary arterial hypertension is. Then we talk about how to screen them annually. All the previous recommendations have just focused on transthoracic echocardiogram. We looked at the evidence, found that pulmonary function test complemented transthoracic echo. We found that NT-proBNP, a blood test, complemented transthoracic echocardiogram. So we talk about different parameters that rheumatologists can use in day-to-day -day practice to screen these patients. And then we talk about who are the appropriate patients to be sent for right heart catheterization, which is the gold standard for diagnosis of pulmonary arterial hypertension. How can um, rheumatologists or primary care physicians implement these in the most efficient manner? Recommendations are developed first of all, not to be prescriptive. So I want to clarify that these are not to get approval or denial by the, by the payers and they are not to be prescriptive and should not replace the, the usual common sense uh, of, of a rheumatologist or internist. Having said that, the recommendations provide the best evidence as it exists today on how to screen your patients with scleroderma. So one of the ways to screen these recommendations like we have done for rheumatoid arthritis or gout would be to have them on a website where people can easily have accessibility to them and use it. Um, there's a lot of teaching that will need to go trying to provide information to the physicians out there on how to implement them in their practice. Are the recommendations available yet or if not, when will they be available? The recommendations like any peer-reviewed publication are undergoing peer review uh, and it will depend upon in the we are hoping in the near recent future they would be available the preliminary recommendations are available as an abstract at this ULAR meeting and will be formally presented at this meeting mm -hmm.